Hey, shalom, shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call Halal, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere sisters who watch and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to the new fruit, the new viewership, the new believers coming into this faith. Uh, just back with another lesson. And I just wanted to point out how we're coming into the time with the Most High, he's about to bring the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans spread throughout the four corners of the earth. He's about to put us back into our own land because for far too long at this point, we've been without our inheritance, our heritage, our legacy, our true language. Most of our people, only through the elect, those dry bones that have been awakened, like it talks about in Ezekiel the 37th chapter, we're the only ones that can see what's going on and realize our desperate need to get back to the ways of old, of our ancient forefathers. But we've been under this oppression so bad, you know, our people have just been completely broken at this point. And we know just going back to Deuteronomy 28 is due to the curses because we disobeyed the laws that the Most High gave us as a nation of people that made us holy and separate amongst the other heathen nations. But right now we're in a time of the destruction of Great Babylon, America. And then, of course, the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on earth where the, the chief enemy, he the number one, Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed nation of white people. And then all of the rest of the heathen nations, they're going to build up our kingdom, just like we have to build up, you know, the precious America that everyone, you know, yearns to come to here for, you know, for the so-called American dream, you know just to be able to uh, just take into this capitalistic or capitalistic opportunities that await in America. But, you know, the, 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 the pretty much the all of the sins, the man of sin is being revealed and all of America's wicked deeds are coming out. So all of these other heathen nations, even they're coming over here, to get money, but they're uh, setting up ways to get back to their people. But that's just the time we in. And the Lord's gathering the tabernacle of David, the house of David, you know, all of the, the tribes, you know, the northern and the southern kingdom, the southern kingdom, which are you so-called Negroes, you know, West Indians, Haitians. And then, of course, the, the northern kingdom are you so-called Negroes or not so-called Negroes, but you so-called uh, North American Indians and you so-called Latinos. That's the, the northern kingdom. But we're all coming back together through the banner of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son through this word, you know. But I just want to get some scriptures, Lord willing, this to edify. I'm going to start off here in Revelation 18 and 2. It says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon is falling, is falling. And Babylon, it means confusion, the land of confusion. That's talking about America, which is spiritually Babylon, according to the Bible. And we're not talking about ancient Babylon, you know, we're talking about the virgin daughter of Babylon, mystery Babylon, like the scriptures talking about. That's talking about America. The great melting pot. It says Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hole of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And that's ultimately talking about when America is destroyed in this thermonuclear destruction via those intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles, though, those ICBMs that are going to be shot off by, you know, namely nations like the, the so-called Russians, the Chinese, the North Koreans, the, 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 the so-called Persians, the, the Iran, you know, so on and so forth. But after the devastating thermonuclear destruction is nothing but, you know, scavenger and just... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just scavenger cre des desert creatures, pretty much, you know, after the thermonuclear destruction. Verse three, it says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So all of these nations have drunk of the wine, the democracy, all of the false philosophy. Femin uh, what is it called? The feminist movement. You know, all of these different Western ways, women's liberation, women empowerment, you know, all of these different philosophies and ideals and business practices that the other nations have got in bed with the whore. America, ultimately, 
Great Babylon, it says, verse 3, I'll read it again. Revelation 18 and 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So these other nations have been afforded the opportunity to, uh, you know, get in on their capitalist endeavors and make money, make profits. That's the bottom line. But they've having to take a, a hold to some of the ways of America. That's run that's ruining them on the back end, you know. But it's through those riches that they assimilate to the American culture. Why, you know, those Moabites, the so-called Chinese men wear suit and tie and all of that. That's not uh, authentic to their, their culture. But they have to get in bed with the damn devil to make profit, to be able to uh, merchandise and sell their goods. Verse four, it says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. And that's going to be the elect. You know, we're going to be delivered out of this place ultimately, man, by the chariots, by what the world calls UFOs. But we know that they're identifiable and they're the, the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the Lord of hosts, along with the ICBM nuclear destruction, the chariots are going to be on the scene because the deliverance is going to be simultaneous as the destruction of Great Babylon. That's going to be also the deliverance of the elect of the nation of Israel. So we're not trying to get caught up in the plagues of this place. We pray that the Lord show us mercy to deliver us the hell up out of here. Because that's, the, that's the, the reality for America. Why everybody's so lifted up in pride this is the reality that the Most High has set up. And here's why. Verse 5. In Revelation 18, verse 5, it says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquity. So the place uh, of sin is being revealed. You know, this place's sins have stacked into the heavens. You know, wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the earth through Babylon the Great, America. And the Most High hath remembered all of the iniquities. And, you know, the Most High remembered it, remembers uh, that's which is past. I'm, I'm loosely paraphrasing Ecclesiastes 3. The Most High, you know, uh, he, he, he hasn't forgot that which is past, something like that. But anyway, the Most High, we're in a time of judgment. All of the sins have stacked up to the heavens, so the Most High is about to intervene. He's about to judge Great Babylon America. And then it says... Verse six, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works in the cup, which she had filled, filled to her double. So Esau, Edom, the powers that rule, that the Most High has given them rule at this appointed time of great Babylon, they're about to be rewarded according to all of their works, all of the rape, robbery, murder, slavery, oppression, you know, that they just put on the nation of Israel, man. So the tables are turning right now. You know, like it says in second Ezra, the sixth chapter, Jacob is holding on to the hill of Esau. Esau, they're being brought down. You read Hebrew Edomites are being brought down and the people of the Lord, starting with the elect of the nation of Israel. We're on the come up, man. We're about to receive our kingdom. We'll be about to be restored back into our own land. We're about to have autonomy and sovereignty and righteousness, man. We're not going to have to go according to your way. We're going to be able to serve our power per more perfectly, just as the scripture says, you know, really be in the new covenant for guys that still can't get that. But uh, I'm going to go to the next script. Salak Yaakim. I'm going to go to Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, and I'll start at the verse uh, 14. It says, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no longer that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. So we're not going to be talking about the deliverance of Egypt after the destruction of Great Babylon America, man, because it's going to be a time as has never been since the foundation of the earth. I'm loosely paraphrasing when you read Daniel, the 12th chapter. I'll read verse 15. It says, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. 
So this great deliverance out of the land of the north, namely the northwestern hemisphere, you know, America, Babylon the Great, man, this going to be something that's going to be spoken of for ages in the kingdom, man, for eternity. Because this is going to be the greatest deliverance ever, man, known to man, out of the greatest and most epic destruction ever known to man as well. It says, uh, Jeremiah 16 and 15, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where the, he had driven them, meaning the diaspora, the scattered Israelites, because that explains the whole Gentile when you read in the New Testament, the Gentile breakdown is talking about those scattered Israelites who were scattered among the heathen nations, not the actual heathen themselves, but Israelites that were scattered among the heathens, man. And we know that the father carries the seed. So, you know, wherever our, the, the seed of the nation of Israel going through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you know, throughout the four corners of the earth, those are Israelites, man. Those are those that are being gathered, gathered out of all the different nations, whether they've been scattered, man. And we fit that prophecy as well, man, because we were once Gentiles, you know, until the Lord put the spirit on the apostles and the elders to, to go out and speak. And we heard this word, man, you know, now we're coming back in into the fall, you know, but I'll get another scripture just to further prove that right now we're in the time of the nation of Israel, the elect rather to be delivered. And this brutal captivity is going to be pelted. It's going to be burnt up, man. But one has to happen before the other. In order for us to get the kingdom of heaven, Esau, he has to be fully put in submission and subjection. That's why his kingdom is going to have to be utterly destroyed. And of course, you know, fire is a cleansing agent. You know, this place is so defiled and polluted. It's just this land is going to have to be cleansed, man. But nobody's going to be dwelling over here. We're going to, you know, set up shop back in our in our real land over in Jerusalem, you know. The true people are going to be set back up in that land by the Lord and the heathens they're going to build. I'll get this and I'll end out the lesson. Isaiah 14 and one, it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And that never changed. That promise that he made to our forefather Abraham, it never changed. You know, it's through grace by faith that we're saved, you know. But it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel, the 12 tribes, and set them in their own land. So we're going to finally have our own land, not having to worry about eviction notices and having neighbors and just having to pay taxes. We're going to have our own land. We're going to have autonomy. We could be able to grow our own cattle, know exactly where our food coming from, our water supply, you know. It says we're going to have real riches because land is one of the key components to wealth. It tells you that in Genesis, Abram at that time, his name, our forefather, Abraham, he was rich in land, silver and cattle. I believe I'm loosely paraphrasing our land, silver and gold. But land, you know, that's an attribute of having true wealth, substance in the earth. We're about to have our own land, man. And even right now, you got guys like Tariq Nasheed, you know, and other Jake. Israelites who don't know that they're Israelites, so they may know that they're Israelites, but, you know, they're just not in the truth. You know, they are seeking reparations from this damn devil. And hey, I'm with it if we can get some reparations on this side. But to hell with Esau's reparations if we don't get it, because this kingdom is about to be destroyed and we're going to have the real reparations in the kingdom, man. I'm going to continue on. For the Lord, I'll read it again, Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And I just got to qualify, the strangers is not talking about the other heathen nations. Like I've said, according to prophecy, the nation of Israel, we've been scattered among the heathen. So it's talking about those scattered Jews, those Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners who didn't know that they were Israelites, who were not keeping the customs of the, the, the Bible and the, of the Israelites, who were not circumcising their male children, who were not keeping the Passover, so on and so forth. Which that really represents us brothers that have awakened to this knowledge today in the whole, the, you know, Internet of things in the YouTube generation. 
You know, we would ease, we, we're those strangers, man, that are being joined back uh, through Yahweh Shah to the covenant. But the new covenant that's about to be established when we're in the kingdom, it says, and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So it's talking about the Israelites that are scattered, that are, are considered strangers, you know, that are dwelling among the heathen nations, not the actual other nations. That's not who that's talking about. In verse two fully explains this, that it's not talking about the heathens in verse one, Isaiah 14 and two. And the people shall take them talking about the Israelites who are in power in the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth, like it says in the Lord's Prayer when you read Matthew 6. It says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And that's the point being made. We're going to rule over our oppressors, man. You know, and the, the same people that took us into captivity and oppressed us, we're going to have rule and dominion and oppress them. But it's all going to be done in righteousness, man. Esau, Edom, these uh, elite mainly that control this society, they're going to be head first into slavery. And they're going to have to be taught how to do everything, man. So it's going to be a break in task to get them acclimated to the system. But it's all going to work, you know, through the spirit. And of course, the other heathen nations. You know, they're all going to be in subjection to us and it's going to work out to the benefit for everybody, though, you know, because even at some point, once the kingdom is, is built up, the other nations, they're going to have their own portion of the land, but they're going to pay tribute to the, the, the Israelites who are in power. You know, and eventually, we, of course, the, the, the Edomites, the damn devil that the Bible speaks of, they're going to be totally put out of existence, you know, after their building assignment is, is complete. They're going to be done away with, man. You know, and the earth is going to be a whole lot better shape. It says, verse three, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So we're going to finally have rest in the kingdom. The scripture says in Hebrews, I believe the fourth chapter, we have to labor to enter into that rest. So we're going to finally have rest once we have our own land to rest in with the damn heathens in subjection. That's going to be the real rest, man. Not no weekend. You know, you already alarm clock anticipating Sunday. Just, man, this is just complete hell here, man. It says, verse four, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how that the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. And America, Babylon the Great, this is the golden city, man. It says, the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. So the power, the dominance, the rulership of America, Babylon the Great is being broken through the hand of the Lord. You know, it says, he who smote the people in wrath with a, with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is, perse is persecuted and unhindered. And we're in a time right now where everybody is going to be trying to stake a claim on the main enemy of the earth, Esau, Edom, the wicked, the devil. All of the allies are going to turn their back on America. Everyone's going to be shooting missiles over here at this place, man. That's why it's going to be an epic destruction. It says the whole earth, verse 7, the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. And that's ultimately in the kingdom of heaven where we're in the new covenant. The whole earth is going to be at rest. The, hurt, the, the earth is going to be in a refreshed state. You know, everyone, everything's going to be set back in order. You know, men are going to know their order. Women are going to know their role. Children are going to know their role. Everything's going to be beautiful, you know. But in order for the kingdom of heaven to be established, this damn devil has to be knocked out of power. And the Most High is going to do it in a dramatic, dramatic fashion. And at the same time, that's when the deliverance is going to take forth. So brothers, hold fast to the faithful word. Man, we're, we're, we're closer and closer to that time where we're about to get delivered the hell up out of here. So Lord willing, we're enduring to the end. Lord willing, that made sense. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rukakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.